Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Malerba and welcome back to the ATH Clinical Case Series. Today's case involves Walt, a 63-year-old man who consulted me for anosmia. Walt traced his loss of smell and a chronic cough back to what he initially thought was a bout of pneumonia six months earlier. During the pneumonia, he lost both his ability to taste and his sense of smell. Although his ability to taste completely returned as he recovered from the pneumonia, his sense of smell never fully returned. He estimated that he still had a 50% deficit in his ability to smell. He noted that he was pretty sick during the pneumonia and that looking back, he suspects it may have been a case of COVID. He was never tested because that was right around the time when the COVID story was breaking. There was no available test for COVID back then. And while a course of the antibiotic amoxicillin had helped him to recover, he still had a lingering cough six months later. I asked Walt to describe his current symptoms. In addition to the lack of sense of smell, all along he'd also had a bit of a runny nose. He noted that his cough was worse while lying in bed at night, especially when lying on his back. Sometimes he was forced to sit up in bed to get relief from the cough. Since the pneumonia, his body temperature tended to fluctuate. Sometimes he felt warm, and other times he felt chilly. Otherwise, for a man of his years, he was in pretty good health. He took no prescription drugs, and his only other complaint was an occasional cold sore on the lower lip that could be brought on by stress or exposure to the sun. So let's see what we get when we repertorize some of Walt's symptoms. Okay, so here we have a rubric for loss of the sense of smell. And here we have loss of the sense of smell during coryza. Coryza is just old-fashioned medical lingo for runny nose. So it's loss of smell with a runny nose. And here we see that loss of smell with loss of taste which is how Walt's symptoms presented when he first got sick. For the cough symptoms, I chose cough aggravated while lying here, and cough worse lying on the back here. This rubric, cough must sit up, can be a very useful rubric in a lot of cough cases. For the fluctuating body temperature symptom, I chose this rubric, alternating states, heat with chill. And finally, given that Walt's problems had developed in the aftermath of a bout with pneumonia, I chose after pneumonia from the generality section in the repertory. As you can see, there are a lot of competing remedies that come up in our repertorization, many of which cover most of these symptoms. While phosphorus comes out on top, all of these remedies cover six or seven out of the total eight symptoms, with the exception of silica, which covers all eight symptoms. So I decided that I needed some more information in order to help me choose with a higher degree of confidence from among these remedies. Now what I didn't tell you is that Walt was a rather, shall we say, colorful character. It was actually quite difficult to get him to describe his symptoms because he was too busy talking. He told amusing and fantastic sounding stories that centered around his ongoing conflicts with neighbors, local law enforcement officials, and politicians, all of whom he seemed to think were out to get him. He told one wild tale after another, seemingly oblivious of the fact that I was trying to get him to focus on his symptoms so that he could describe them to me. With this in mind, I chose a few more symptoms for repertorization. Walt's extreme talkativeness was the obvious elephant in the room. The old homeopaths used the word loquacious to refer to talkativeness, so I chose the rubric loquacity here. Walt was convinced that local authority figures had it out for him, so I chose suspiciousness, mistrustfulness, to represent that. 
And finally, his unruly, uninhibited, unpredictable nature led me ch to choose the rubric wildness here. Now let's take a look at the top remedies that key out for these mental symptoms. We see hyacyamus first, then belladonna, stramonium, lachesis, baptisia, which is a bit surprising, opium, veratrum, aconite, cannabis, simisifuga, ignatia, cuprum, aurum, and take note of this last one. Remember that phosphorus came out on top of our first repertorization. Okay, so now let's look back at our original repertorization of Walt's physical symptoms. Of the list of remedies that I just read off to you, we only see phosphorus here and hyacyamus down here in the original repertorization. Now let's see what happens when we combine all of Walt's symptoms together into one repertorization. So as you can see, here are the mental symptoms and below we have all the physical symptoms. Take a look now at what happens. Number one on our remedy list is phosphorus. And coming in at number two is hyacyamus. Note that phosphorus covers all symptoms except loss of smell with coryza. And hyacyamus lists under all symptoms except loss of smell with coryza and cough lying on the back. So now the question becomes, which is the best remedy for Walt? In actuality, while I did do the first repertorization, I never bothered to look up or add the mental symptoms because it was pretty clear to me that the one remedy from the original repertorization that matched Walt's behavior was hyacyamus. Hyacyamus is a remedy well known for its loquacity and wild, outlandish, attention-seeking behavior designed to get a rise out of people. Even though phosphorus lists under the same mental symptoms, phosphorus has a completely different feel to it. Phosphorus types can be talkative, but usually in a friendly, outgoing, positive, happy, upbeat kind of way. Their behavior is not manipulative like hyacyamus. They do not seek to shock or offend in order to get attention. I decided to prescribe two doses of Hyacyamus 30C. Walt returned two months later. My sense of smell started coming back within 24 hours and it was fully back in a few days. My postnasal drip stopped and my cough is long gone. My face isn't looking tired and my sneezing fit stopped too. This was a symptom that he hadn't previously mentioned to me. Prior, I was nervous, but the remedy helped. I'm playing piano, which I haven't done in 30 years. I'm more motivated. I'm getting stuff done around the house. Over the ensuing months, I repeated the remedy at long intervals. His anosmia and other physical symptoms never returned. At different times, he reported, I'm focused. My strength is returning. I'm working on my house. I'm using the exercise bike. I can't believe it. I've lost 35 pounds. I'm going to bed earlier. My energy is great. I don't even want sugar anymore. And then one day, without prompting, he said, I don't have anger issues anymore. I asked what he meant, and he admitted that he was having fewer conflicts with the people around him. Seven months after his first dose of hyacyamus, Walt seemed calmer and more grounded. He seemed noticeably less like that wild, zany guy that I'd originally met. So what lessons can we learn from this case? As we've seen in previous cases, as far as homeopathy is concerned, mind and body are one and the same. I don't think I would ever have been able to help Walt's physical symptoms without the behavioral clues that he exhibited. However, it's important not to get the wrong impression. It's not always possible to solve cases based on emotional symptoms. Sometimes it works the other way around. Sometimes a physical clue or clues may provide the key that helps deal with an emotional problem. 
The bottom line is that you have to work with the clues that are presented to you. Another important lesson that this case teaches us is that it doesn't really matter what we call Walt's problem. We couldn't really call it a case of pneumonia anymore, and although it sure sounded like he originally had COVID, given the pneumonia and loss of taste and smell, he didn't have COVID anymore either. If Walt had consulted a conventional doctor, he might have received any of a number of different diagnoses. For example, chronic sinusitis is a popular diagnosis. Allergies is another common one. If you watched episode six in the clinical case series, you'll understand why I say that some doctors would have blamed Walt's problems on acid reflux. Some doctors might devote a great deal of time debating Walt's diagnosis. They might even publish scientific papers about the relevance and accuracy of those diagnoses. But conventional diagnostic labeling tends to be rather in in inconsistent, even arbitrary. On the other hand, to a homeopath, it's pretty darn obvious what Walt's problem was. And homeopaths have a term for it too, one that is far more fitting and useful. Depending upon how you look at it, Walt either had a case of never well since pneumonia or never well since COVID. Never well since is a category of illness that homeopaths have recognized for almost 200 years. Never well since is a ubiquitous phenomenon. The world is full of people who have never been well since. Joe suffers from fatigue and has never been well since he had mononucleosis. Kathy has achy joints and has been never well since a bout with the flu. Alice complains of brain fog and has been never well since she contracted Lyme disease. While conventional medicine frequently ruminates over the significance of its disease classification nomenclature, homeopathy simply states the obvious, thus bypassing all the academic posturing. If a patient tells me that he has never felt the same since a bout of pneumonia five years ago, then that's what the problem is. Any medical professional would agree that Walt had long since recovered from his infection per se, and yet Walt hadn't fully recovered. He still had lingering, nagging symptoms that affected his overall sense of well-being. Walt has never been well since his bout with pneumonia, regardless of whether it was COVID pneumonia or not. The concept of never well since is extremely useful because it helps trace an illness to its origins and it helps patients to feel like they're not crazy because it validates their own conclusions about their own experiences. For example, the medical world has been engaged in a furious debate over whether there is such a thing as chronic Lyme disease. Homeopaths see this as a waste of time, a meaningless debate over semantics. Meanwhile, patients are just innocent bystanders hoping for an effective treatment. Homeopaths bypass all the unnecessary drama by noting the obvious, which is that there are many poor, suffering patients out there who have never been well since they contracted Lyme disease. While everyone is arguing over whether chronic Lyme disease is a real thing, homeopaths skip the drama and get right down to treatment. As in Walt's case, they do so by taking the case, noting all the symptoms, analyzing those symptoms for patterns, and prescribing the homeopathic remedy that best fits the pattern. I've written extensively about the diagnostic name game in my book, Green Medicine. The real reason conventional medicine spends so much time discussing diagnostic dilemmas is because their therapeutic options are so sorely lacking. Their therapeutic options are lacking because their single-minded belief that all effective treatments must take the form of a pharmaceutical drug. When the profession has little to offer suffering patients, which is almost always true in never well since cases, it's easier for physicians to distract themselves with diagnostic debates, convincing themselves and their patients too that they're engaged in serious scientific inquiry. Sadly, those academic debates rarely ever lead to meaningful therapeutic breakthroughs. The reason for this is clear. Instead of accepting patients and their illnesses at face value, medicine tries to force them to conform to a rigid system of disease classification. 
Cookie cutter medicine demands this because treatment is determined by the diagnostic label assigned to the patient. Homeopathy is the opposite of cookie cutter medicine. Every single case must be approached anew and must be understood on its own terms without preconceived ideas about what a disease is or should be. In homeopathy, one size never fits all. Well, thanks for tuning in. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to tell your friends and colleagues about all things homeopathy.